And joining us now is New Mexico's Democratic Secretary of State, Maggie Toulouse Oliver. Since election conspiracies took off around 2020, she has had to leave her home for weeks at a time and to remain under state police protection after her photo and home address were posted on a website called Enemies of the People. Mm. Um, Secretary Oliver, thank you for your time this morning. I take it, uh, based on what we've heard about your story, that as horrific as these shootings are, you're not particularly surprised by them. I wish I could say that I were, but I do think what's really important is that we acknowledge that we have moved past uh, the point of rhetoric, uh, complaints, uh, lies about the election process, you know, sort of fueling, uh, you know, toxic behavior. And we have now come to a point, obviously January 6th uh, w was a, a huge demonstration of political violence. And now we're seeing it follow through into people at the local level who are, are so gripped and, and so bought into the concept um, that our elections are rigged, of course, a total lie, totally mm -hmm. fake, but they're willing to take action in, in the form of political violence. This is tremendously scary and it has to stop. And Mika, this is the second Secretary of State we've had on the last hour who's yeah. had threats against her life. Secretary Griswold of Colorado was just on with us. Jocelyn Benson in Michigan has had well-publicized threats against her. It's happening across the country. Yeah. Um, what happened to Gretchen Whitmer? What yep. happened on January 6th? We could go on and on and on. And what's the common de denominator here? The common denominator is Donald J. Trump. Okay. And in New Mexico, what we're seeing here is a little mini January 6th with the Trump playbook being used. An election is lost by a landslide. The guy doesn't like that he lost, so he plays the Trump playbook and starts denying his loss and then gets people riled up to do violence. That's the Trump playbook. And uh, to be honest, there's members of the House. There's, there's different politicians now who have security. They didn't have security before Trump. Full disclosure, I didn't have security before Trump. I have to live with security now before Trump. Let's just be honest about what's going on here and about the threats we're facing. And to that, Maggie, I ask you, where is this going? And what's it going to take to turn the corner? Well, I think two things. First and foremost, of course, here in our state, as many other states are doing, uh, both election officials and now public officials in general, we have to take a, a very strong proactive stance to protect our public officials. And so I am going to be working with my colleagues and the state legislature to see what we can do to tighten up protections, to make sure that our, our personal private information stays private, that our homes stay secure, um, that we also ensure that there are increased penalties for even contemplating this kind of behavior moving forward. Because again, you know, this individual who was just arrested was calling for me to be hung in the town square. Uh, late last year around election time. So so we know now that when we see these patterns of violent political rhetoric, they can turn into actions. But we also need to continue to raise the call for this rhetoric to stop, for the lies and the mis and disinformation to stop, because we know that it is radicalizing people into political violence. We need Republicans to reject this and not just out, you know, uh, once in a while when it gets a little scary on January 6th, Kevin McCarthy. We need them to completely, wholeheartedly reject this. And we need other Republicans who are saying nothing to say something. Because at this point, that's just as bad. At least we know when someone is threatening to hang someone in the town square, they mean it. We know that now. Well, we saw on January 6th. They brought a noose to the Capitol talking about hanging Mike Pence. I mean, right. it can't get any more scary than that. And I would just ask the secretary, how has this impacted election administration in your state? Do you see volunteers who hesitate now to come and help with local elections? It, you know, it's such a lovely thing. So many people volunteer their time to help preserve democracy and their lives can be threatened for it. Our, we are seeing changes and, and it is a challenge and it is a challenge to recruit and keep those folks and not even just because of the threats of violence, but because of the harassment, um, you know, the accusations of, of committing, uh, you know, election fraud and rigging elections, right? Even just that alone uh, to say nothing of the threats and, and potential for actual, uh, actual violence has really put a, a dampening effect on this and um, for our democracy to continue to 
to thrive, uh, much less survive. We need those folks. We need every single person to help us uh, ensure a healthy democracy. New Mexico Secretary of State Maggie Toulouse-Oliver, thank you. Thank you for using your voice. We appreciate your coming on the show this morning.